Michael Faraday, who later became famous for his work on electricity and magnetism, would take a critical early step in the long descent towards absolute zero when he was asked to investigate the properties of chlorine using crystals of chlorine hydrate. This experiment was potentially explosive, which is perhaps why it was left to Faraday, and perhaps also why Dr. Andrew Shidlow is curious to repeat it today. We are about to undertake an exceedingly dangerous experiment in which Michael Faraday, in 1823, heated this substance here, the hydrate of chlorine, in a sealed tube. Is that sealed? That's sealed, Andrew. That's absolutely brilliant. In the original experiment, Faraday took the sealed tube and heated the end containing the chlorine hydrate in hot water. He put the other end in an ice bath. Soon he noticed yellow chlorine gas being given off. Because the gas is being produced, pressure's building up. Ray, this is where it starts to get dangerous. So if you now take a few steps back. When Faraday did the experiment, a visitor, Dr. Paris, came by to see what he was up to. Paris pointed out some oily matter in the bottom of the tube. Faraday was curious and decided to break open the tube. Right, so let's have a look inside here. The explosion sent shards of glass flying. With the sudden release of pressure, the oily liquid vanished. That's exactly what happened. It popped open, glass flew. And can you detect the strong smell of chlorine? I can now. Absolutely well. He detected the strong smell of chlorine, and this, um, this was an, a major mystery for him. Faraday soon realized the increased pressure inside the sealed tube had caused the gas to liquefy. And when the tube was broken, the oily liquid evaporated. Just as heat must be applied to evaporate water, he saw that energy from the surrounding air had transformed liquid chlorine into a gas. In a brilliant deduction, Faraday realized that by absorbing heat from the air, he had cooled or refrigerated the surroundings. Michael Faraday had produced cold. Later, he used the same technique with ammonia, which absorbs even more heat. He predicted that one day this cooling might be commercially useful. <laughs>